Since I was seven years old, I always wanted to become a police officer. When I was 19, I tried getting a job and on my journey to become a police officer, I got told no 14 different times by six different departments that I could not become a police officer in their department. But today I see here before you a retired police sergeant after doing 12 years with the Philadelphia Police Department. So I'm gonna share with you in this video what I developed in myself and what you can also develop in yourself to persevere through all those no's so that you can get to your yes. So stay tuned, Carlton, roll that intro. You're listening to the Goldie Gray Podcast with Travis Bush Sr. Inspiring you to strive for greatness in everything, everywhere, every time. Go be great! great. Great day. Welcome to the Go Be Great podcast. I am Travis Wolf Sr. and you, you know it. Yes, you, 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 and your friends sitting next to you are great. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I'm super, super grateful that you're spending your time with me today. You could be any, anywhere in the world, but you're here with me and I truly appreciate that. And I don't take it for granted. So I'm not going to waste your time here. I'm going to get right into it. But before I do, guys, please, if you like this video, like, share, subscribe, share it please share it let other people see because we want to get this message out to the world i know that it's going to inspire and help you today and i want to inspire and help someone else and you can be the catalyst for that assistance of somebody else so please share the video and uh that being said guys you know i wanted to be a cop since i was seven years old i was living in poverty when i was very young we had just got evicted from our apartment and we were living in a motel at the time my mother myself and my three sisters and there was this police officer in Brooklawn, New Jersey with the Brooklawn Police Department who used to come around to the motel that we lived in and he would check on us from time to time, just come knock on our door, see how we're doing. Um, he knew that my parents were, my, my dad wasn't around and my mom was on drugs. So he knew that, he knew our situation and he would come around and he would bring us food from the neighborhood food establishments. He would bring us candy and, you know, like milk, eggs, cheese, things like that, so we can kind of cook for ourselves and take care of ourselves while our mom wasn't there. And, you know, I had an older sister who was nine years old, who used to always cook for us. So it was good to actually have some food for her to prepare for us at that time. But I, I was so grateful because police in that at that time, you know, it was 1992. And I used to be the victim of very racist um, policing at that time, because the neighborhoods that we lived in, we were the only people of color. So people didn't really want us there and don't get me wrong i did i did i was involved in plenty of mischief so i had tons of things to be able to get in trouble for but often people in the neighborhood would lie on me and the police would come to our door saying that i did things that i i had no part in um just because they wanted to get us out of their neighborhood so they did we got evicted from the apartment that we were in we're living in this motel and you know fast forward a little bit this police officer is coming around taking care of us every now and again and just because of the experiences that I had with other police that weren't, weren't so good, to have this police officer show us that level of compassion um, just really inspired me to want to become a police officer and share that same compassion with someone else and inspire someone else to do something great in their life as well. So when I was 19 years old, I, I tried to get the job as a police officer, but I kept getting told no by different departments because of my background. I was I was doing pretty good on the written test and things like that but the oral test sometimes i wouldn't do so well on sometimes i passed the polygraph sometimes i'd fail the polygraph sometimes i i, I always did well on the, on the physical because i was in great shape um but you know there was always some challenge some hang up somewhere along the line and it was really at the time very frustrating to be going through this process be doing so well i'd be number one on some of these tests for some of these departments and then in the end i wouldn't get the job and it was very challenging because I really wanted that job. But through all those no's, I developed this idea that that job was for me. Like I already asked God for it. I know it's for me. And I wouldn't stop until I became the police officer that I always wanted to become. I was this, I was like determined, um, relentless in that pursuit. And because I just kept at it and kept at it, even though different departments would tell me no, um, even the Philadelphia Police Department told me no in I think I was 19 years old at the time or 20 years old. Um, three years later, or four, yeah, I was 19. And then four years later, when I was 23, they hired me. They gave me a shot. So I, because I, I kept persevering and kept pushing through and just kept being persistent and consistent, going through the processes, continuously applying, 
I got my record expunged because I had an arrest on my record. I'll tell you about that in another episode. But I had an arrest on my record. I had to get expunged. And once I did all those things, Philadelphia Police Department hired me. So, man, I got to tell you, it was an amazing ride, you know, to go through all that and then finally achieve that dream. It was like the greatest thing that ever happened to me at that time in my life. I was, um, or one of the greatest things. But so it's Friday, February 9th, 2007. I get a call from the Philadelphia Police Department and they're telling me that you have to report to the police academy on Monday at 8 a.m. And I'm like, I'm in my last semester of college. I have four classes left. And yeah, they're like, yeah, you got to report to the academy on Monday at 8 a.m. So I had no idea what to do at this point. I I just dropped all of my classes. I probably lost a lot of money, but I dropped all of my classes online and got ready to go to the police academy. And it was one of the most fulfilling things in my entire, entire life because I've wanted this job since I was seven years old. My family's got pictures of me in underwear with a cap gun tucked in my pants. No shirt, just I'm like three or four or five years old, just walking around with underwear on and a cap gun in my pants. Like I used to watch those FBI movies or police movies. I always wanted to be that cop or that FBI agent. So getting that job was just one of the most fulfilling things I could have ever achieved in my whole life. But I got told no so many different times. The whole point of this story is I got told no. I got told no. Philadelphia police, Pennsylvania State Police, New Jersey State Police, Delaware State Police. I just kept getting told no. And I even tried applying for some other departments in the counties and around Philadelphia. And I just kept getting told no. But Today, I'm a retired police sergeant. You know, what, has, what have you tried to achieve in life and been told no? The ability to persevere through those no's, if you look at those no's as not necessarily no's, but not right now, or not at this moment, or try again, or, you know, just not this second, as opposed to no, it'll change your life. When we look at no as no and a definitive no, we gotta remember when somebody tells us no, that's a human being telling us no, right? And sometimes people might say no, but God's already said yes. God's already said yes. So if I ask God for a thing and God says yes, I don't care what human being along the way tells me no. I don't care what process along the way tells me no. I don't care what the rules say along the way that disqualify me. God's already said yes. So if there's something that you're looking to achieve in your life and people are telling you no, or even you're telling yourself no, if you ask God for it, God already said yes. So you have to figure out what to do to persevere through it until you get to that yes. And I promise you, if you look at those no's as try again, look at those no's as maybe next time, not right now. If you look at those no's as something that's showing you not this particular way, but you have to, you have to finesse it and work it and keep working it until you get that yes, it'll change the way you look at almost everything in your life. Don't let other people's no mean no to you. Well, in some cases, obviously. No means no in certain cases. Guys, you know what I'm talking about. But <laughs> all jokes aside, in many cases, no doesn't mean no. So learn how to persevere through those no's, and I promise you, you'll get to your yes. Go get some. Keep persevering and go be great.